The camera on the back of the Cat S62 smartphone is a single 48 megapixel sensor from an unspecified manufacturer, but you know, it's probably Sony. Anyway, there's also a 2 megapixel depth sensor, so you know, just the one camera. On the front is an 8 megapixel shooter for selfies. One really nice thing that I wasn't used to was the fact that I only had to stop and take one photo. There's only one camera. There's no zoom, no ultra wide. That's it. So taking sample photos was just kind of a weird experience. And I'm sure it will come to no surprise to you that these cameras are not very good. Oh, don't get me wrong. On a brightly lit day or an even an overcast day, the camera is serviceable if a bit on the dark side. Photos overall are sharp and in focus, mostly. Occasionally the focus will wander a little bit, but overall I have little to complain about as long as you're in perfect light. Highlights get a little blown out, but the darks are generally okay, not a lot of detail lost in the shadows. I was frankly surprised at how well the camera performed. Macro shots are also fairly good. The depth of field is extremely shallow though, so often the bokeh starts before you even run out of flower. But even so, you can get some respectable macro shots with this camera. Maybe the depth sensor is actually depthing? I don't know. Zoom is, well, just no. With the lights on and not zoomed, you're doing okay. Curiously, this phone doesn't have a burst function. It's been a while since I've tried a phone that didn't, but I still managed to snag a couple of decent shots on the trampoline. The selfie camera is a little all over the place, honestly. Sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's bright. Once again, here the surrounding light will have a big effect on what kind of photo you end up with. I know, shocking insight, right? Portrait mode on both the main camera and the selfie camera is not quite as crisp as I would like. Considering the phone that this is tacked onto, it's perfectly decent and you'll get better results from the main camera than you will the selfie camera. But overall, I'd call the camera on here just okay. At night, well, the camera is plain just not good. Focus is all over the place, whites are blown out, and there's some type of artifacting going on all over the place. It's like the pixels aren't properly aligned when the photo is put together. Even text, which is usually the easiest thing to resolve in a low light photo, doesn't come out very well. On the video side, focus issues are the biggest problem you'll have, even in bright daylight. There's also very little stabilization on either the main camera and the selfie shooter. Bright light, low light, it doesn't matter. The video camera is just flat out bad, and that's not a surprise. This is a rugged phone, not a flagship phone. It's basically a budget phone shoved into a rugged and durable body, so the camera performs like a camera on a $250 phone, even though this phone costs $500. Moving on from the camera as a little bit of a bonus, I thought it would be fun to talk about some of the light torture tests that I put this phone through. Unfortunately, a family member of mine had a pretty bad accident before I had a chance to really put this phone through its paces. I had planned on riding several rides at Great America with this phone in my back pocket. Honestly, if this thing could stand up to a 300 pound fatty pulling 3 G's on the Superman ride, it could stand up to a lot. I also had planned on taking this phone to the beach and tossing it in the water and the sand, but unfortunately both of those trips had to get cancelled. As it was, this phone did get smashed into the dirt in my backyard garden and was washed thoroughly with soap and water in my sink. Additionally, this phone spent some time in my freezer. My first attempt caused the phone to boot into recovery mode, but the second attempt, the phone survived just fine. The phone also went for a little trip as high in the air as my wimpy arm could toss it. It landed and continued to record with no problem. The phone also went up against a few sprays of water, first from an overhead sprinkler used to cool down the amusement park crowd, and the next time a nighttime sprinkler bath at City Hall. Finally, the phone was dropped several times from 5 feet onto concrete. Overall, the phone held up decently with a few nicks and scars around the periphery. Honestly, considering how much this phone dealt with, I'm not dissatisfied on that account at all. If I were still a young man working on a job site as a contractor, this phone would be a solid contender for my tool belt.